Hello and welcome to this video where we look at some of the key strategies behind tackling British Maths Olympiad problems. And in this first video we're going to look at some strategies for some of the geometry problems. Now it's very easy when you see Olympiad problem to think it's um, completely inaccessible and there's some kind of magic that these sort of Olympiad experts use where they can just sort of see these things that uh, mere mortals wouldn't be able to spot. But actually there's a number of systematic approaches that we can use for these kind of problems which come up time and time again and it's a particular strategy for this problem we're about to look at that would be quite hard to spot if you didn't know this particular strategy but once you know this strategy it's quite easy to apply and it can be used for a number of different problems. So let's look at this particular problem. In the acute angled triangle ABC, the foot of the perpendicular from B to CA is E. Let L be the tangent to the circle ABC at B. The foot of the perpendicular from C to L is F. Prove that EF is parallel to AB. Now my first piece of advice is to always draw your diagram nice and big. The number of times I've seen students draw diddy little diagrams and they get very confused when they try and write their angles and such because they can't really read it anymore. It becomes very unmanageable. So draw your diagram nice and big. Now also notice it talks about the circle ABC. It's a circle that goes through the points A, B and C and it starts by talking about the cute angle triangle ABC. So my advice, if you're trying to draw a triangle but you later have to circumscribe it by drawing a circle around it, if you draw the circle first, like this, it's much easier to then draw a triangle in it such that the three points are on the circle. So we need a generic acute angle triangle. So I'm going to make it as generic as possible. And by generic, I mean that it doesn't look equilateral and it doesn't look isosceles. Often a key skill with drawing these diagrams is you want to try and avoid it looking like it's a specific case. For example, if this line looked like it was a diameter of the circle, then it can become confusing later because you might make assumptions about the diagram which are not true. So I've kept this as general as possible. So I'm just going to label these A, B and C. Right, let's use the rest of the information. Uh, the foot of the perpendicular from B to CA is E. Now, you might not have seen this phrase, foot of the perpendicular, before, but a perpendicular is basically um, a line which is perpendicular to some other line and goes through a given point. So it's a perpendicular from B, so we start at B, and it's a perpendicular to CA. So it's perpendicular to CA, and we're going to draw a line to CA, which, is, which goes through B and is right angle, so we can put the right angle there. And it says that is E, so let's label, label it E. Uh, and let L be the tangent to the circle ABC at B. So at B, we have to draw a tangent. And let's label it L. Finally, the foot of the perpendicular from C to L is F. So it's a line that goes through C and is perpendicular to the line L. So let's draw a line like that. And make that a right angle. And it's called that F. So this is F. And we need to prove that EF is parallel to AB. So EF is this line here. And we have to prove that is parallel to AB. Now, just because I've drawn my diagram a little bit squiffy, it means that this doesn't look quite parallel to this. And under such circumstances, you might want to redraw your diagram, but I'll stick with what I've got here. Now let's try and model the information in the diagram. Basically, we have to use every single piece of information in the problem to solve it. So for example, if we're told this is a tangent, we have to use the fact that this is a tangent in some way. The fact that we know these are right angles, we have to use that in some kind of way. So what circle theorems do we know involving tangents? Well, just to remind you, and this is a particular key circle theorem, that if you have a chord of the circle, so this is a chord, and you've got a tangent to the circle, so this is your tangent, a line that touches the circle, and you have a particular angle between the chord and the tangent, then the angle in what we call the alternate segment. Now, if you think about it, the, the area between a chord and the circumference of a circle, that's known as a segment. So this is a segment here, we call that the minor segment because it's less than half a circle, but this is also the segment. And we call this the alternate segment because it's on the other side of the chord from the tangent. So, and to have an angle in the segment means if we take the two ends of the chord and fire somewhere onto the circumference of the circle, that's what we call the angle in the segment. 
And the alternate segment theorem is just that the angle in the segment is the same as the angle between the chord and the tangent. So that's one key circle theorem. Another key circle theorem is, which we're going to use here, is about cyclic quadrilaterals. So if we have four points on the circumference of a circle, then opposite angles of the cyclic quad quadrilateral at 180. So if that is A, then that angle would be 180 minus A. But what's great about this circle theorem is that it works backwards as well. If you manage to find a quadrilateral, which is not necessarily drawn in a circle, where the opposite angles do add up to 180, it means you can circumscribe, i.e. draw a circle around that quadrilateral. So if we had, for example, um, a quadrilateral that looks a bit like this, and we knew that was a right angle and that was a right angle, then we can see opposite angles add to 180, and so would those as well. And that means that we can draw a circle around this quadrilateral. That's a pretty rubbish circle, but you, can, you see my point. And this particular circle theorem backwards is very commonly used. It's very hard to spot if, you, if I hadn't told you to spot it, but I can think of at least four BMO problems where I've been able to use this particular principle here. So let's see if we can use these circle theorem. So, first we know we've got this tangent here, and we've got a chord here, so it makes sense to name this angle. Let's call it X. And then that means we can apply the alternate segment theorem. So we can see, well, that's a chord. If we fire into the circle, it means that angle is the same. And then what we could do is um, we could sort of try and chase the angles round. We could find other angles because we know that's 90. That would be 90 minus x, etc. But you eventually get to a dead end. You've kind of chased all the angles, but you haven't managed to get the angles you need. Another point to make is that we actually need to think, how do we know when we solve this problem? We're trying to show that EF is parallel to AB, so this line is parallel to this. What would that mean? Well, it could, for example, involve showing that this angle here is equal to this this angle. Because these lines are both resting on this same line here, if these angles are equal, they're corresponding angles, and that means those two lines would be parallel. So we know we need to show that that angle is x, the same as that, and then we would be done. Now I would look at sort of these right angles here, and that would immediately make me think of this kind of construction here, where we've got a cyclic quadrilateral, even though there's no circle around it. So can you see, look, here, We've got a right angle there, a right angle there. So that means this quadrilateral here is a cyclic quadrilateral. And that means we can draw a circle around it. So I'm going to just try and draw a circle with a dotted line. And what's great about that is that once we've managed to circumscribe it with another circle, we get a bunch of circle theorems for free that we can apply to the various angles inside the cyclic quadrilateral. So we're trying to prove that this is x. Can you notice at this point that we've kind of got this butterfly type construction inside this new circle we drew? And you might have learned at GCSE that when you have that kind of construction, like this, we say these angles here are in the same segment and they will be equal. And similarly, these two angles would be in the same segment. And what it means, by the way, to say these are in the same segment is that if I drew a chord here, I said earlier that an angle in the segment is where we sort of fire from the two ends of the chord somewhere onto the circumference. So we're firing there, we're firing there, but we're firing within the same segment. So the angles within this same segment here have got to always be equal. So that means, can you see, look, this angle has got to be the same as this angle, and we're done, because we've shown that those two angles are equal, therefore they're corresponding angles, and therefore these two lines are parallel. And then once we've kind of used our diagram to prove that, it's the relatively easy case of writing it up, making sure that we don't leave anything unstated. So we'd probably want to start by defining that angle x. We'd say let angle A, B, and let's create a vertex here. Let's say G. So let angle A, B, G be equal to x. And then we use the alternative segment theorem, didn't we? So you could say, therefore, angle B, C, B is equal to x by the alternate segment theorem. And then what we could say is we use this kind of particular construction here, didn't we? So you could say that angle CEB is, is equal to 90 degrees as EB is perpendicular to AC. And then we could also say that angle CFB is equal to 90 for the same reasons. You would obviously write that out. 
And you could say, therefore, we know this is cyclic quadrilateral. So we've got B, E, C, F is a cyclic quadrilateral. And you've got to justify why? As angle CFB plus angle CEB adds up to 180 degrees. And then we used angles in the same segment. So you could say, therefore, angle EFB is equal to angle ECB which equals to x as angles in same segment are equal. And then finally, because we've shown those two angles the same, we'd say angle EFB equals angle ABG equals x, therefore corresponding angles. And then therefore EF and AG are parallel. And our proof is complete. Now you can see that this proof isn't actually very long. We've only used a couple of circle theorems here and we only had to jump a few angles before we actually got to the angle we wanted. So it's often about spotting these clever approaches from experience of doing these problems and having used these approaches, we can come up with a very efficient approach to solving these problems.